Recently, while browsing the Rust subreddit, I stumbled upon the question why Rust is technically allowed to randomly not call destructors. Well, let's dig into the details and see what's actually going on. But first of all, let's talk about why I'm suddenly talking about Rust. Well, this uh, requires a video of its own, but to say the least, I think Rust is the future of native programming and I think it's a good idea to incorporate it into the channel. Let's get back to the topic. Here you can see the actual question. Why Rust is technically allowed to randomly not call destructors? This question comes from a quote. Forget is not marked as unsafe because Rust safety guarantees do not include a guarantee that destructors will always run. For example, a program can create a reference cycle or call process exit to exit without running destructors. The truth is, in Rust, just like in C++, destruction is very deterministic. Destructors will be called when, for example, variables or objects go out of scope. There is nothing random about it. There is no randomly not calling destructors. But, in fact, there are situations where destructors will not be called. Some of those situations are already mentioned in that quote. Reference cycles are calling process exit. There are many other examples of when destructors will not be called. For example, an infinite loop. That's pretty obvious. But let's maybe jump into Rust Playground and see some of the cases. Let's create a sample struct widget. And let's add a destructor. And let's just print something. As we can see, the destructor has been called just as we expected. But what happens when we actually try to terminate our process in an unexpected way? Well, that's not really unexpected, but it's unusual. Let's call it like that. And here you go. No destructor has been called, exactly as mentioned in the quote. In fact, if you go to the documentation, for std process exit, you can see that this function never returns and that it terminates the process. No destructors on the current stack or any other thread stack will be run, exactly as if you would call exit or similar in C or C++. Well, rather C++ and C doesn't have destructors anyway. So now we have a very trivial example of why destructors might not be called. Can we say it's random? Not really, it's pretty explicit that we want to terminate the process. Well, terminate is a bad word, that we want to exit the process. A similar logic applies when the process is ended by some external means. In such case, we can never assume that destructors in any language will be called. Another example, maybe less trivial one, is one involving reference cycles. So let's create one. Let's include the necessary stuff. Okay, so now let's create our cycle. We first borrow notably and we simply clone our widget. And here you have an, an example of a reference cycle where the destructor is not being called. We use a combination of option, rc and ref cell to first create our widget and then clone ourselves into our cycle member, thus creating a reference cycle for rc. Does this mean Rust can randomly not call destructors? Nope. 
Such thing is possible in all other languages which have some kind of shared memory pointers. And no garbage collector, of course. So here you go. We have a few examples when the destructors aren't called, but there isn't really a problem with Rust itself. It's the problem with the logic. So let's get back to our quote. Forget is not marked as unsafe because Rust safety guarantees do not include a guarantee that destructors will always run. This is a key part. We already seen the cases when destructors are not being called. There are of course more exotic cases, especially when you consider unsafe code. But nevertheless, not calling destructors is safe from the code safety point of view. You don't have any undefined behavior. You simply have potentially leaked resources. While leaks are not desirable in any way, they are not really the fault of the language. They are the problems with the logic and thus the program is considered safe, yet logically not so much. I hope you found this short video informative, I hope it cleared things up about the structures and calling them both in Rust, C++ and probably other languages with similar semantics. If you haven't tried Rust already, I strongly recommend you give it a try. If you have any questions, post them down below, keep subscribe and I see you in the next one. Peace.